Hey folks, this is Kalori. Welcome to Scrum and Agile Digest. Alright, so the next thing that we'll talk about is Scrum metrics. Um, so yeah, there's a graphic here of the stormtroopers. Um, uh, we might be evil, but we don't use metrics for evil by micromanaging individuals. So um, uh, this is kind of funny way to show metrics, right? Uh, and I did take it from Scrum Shortcuts. So, you know, metrics is a, a necessary evil. Um, you have to present it. it, doesn't always show a good story. So <clears throat> there are some important metrics uh, that we show in Scrum. One of them is team velocity. It's a very important metric. It basically shows how many story points a team is able to finish um, in one sprint. And that basically tells you uh, how many story points the team should actually, actually commit in the sprint planning meeting. So it's, it's team velocity will give you a understanding, a metric on how much it, the team should not be over committing or under committing. They should be committing according to their team velocity. And what is the team velocity? It is the measurement unit. It's basically the story point average that we try to find out based on the last few uh, story points that was accepted after each sprint velocity. It's basically the measure of work that a team can tackle during a single sprint, right? So let's say they are able to do 40 story points um, in a sprint, that is their team velocity, right? They're able to do 50 story points in a sprint, that is their team velocity. And what the, the best way to do it is you find an average of the previous uh, sprints and that will give you a good overview of how many stories a team can actually take up. So, you know, you see that they can, uh, if you find that, you know, their team velocity is, it's always been between 30 and 40, you should not try to commit any stories beyond 40 story points, right? Or beyond, let's say, 45 story points. So it should be in the vicinity of 40. If you try to select, if you try to commit 80 story points, your team will probably not be able to uh, achieve that they won't even finish that or you know if you do uh, if their velocity is 40 and you try to commit 10 story points and basically you're under committing so you know your resources uh, are just sitting around uh, sitting around idle you know getting wasted so uh, team velocity gives you a good um, measure of how many story points you should be um, committing in a sprint and this is a good metric to have during the sprint planning meeting So um, this is an exercise for you. Um, you know, it's uh, about the team velocity. So if you if you look at this um, chart, right? I mean, let's say you have a release one and you have ten iterations in release one, and let's say the uh, team has already completed this release one, right? And they have completed these ten iterations, and we know that the velocity in story points, right, uh, for them was, you know, let's say the first iteration was 20, then 10, 15, like this. We have recorded the velocity that they, the team had in their story points in every iteration in the release, right? So this is a historical number we have it. Now we are into release two right now, and we have 200 points in release two in total has 200 points, right? So, and release two will also have multiple iterations for like release one, but it has total 200 points. We want to find out that if release two has eight iterations, will the team be able to complete these 200 points in the eight iterations in release two or not? Right? That is the question. How do you find that out? So, you know, based on my release one, right, if I take the average of all the iterations, the 10 iterations, uh, and I try to find the average velocity in story points, I can easily determine that if my team is capable of taking up 200 points or not in release two, right? Um, so you can 
quickly calculate this uh, if you want but I'll move over to the next slide so if you look at the velocity of the team from release one you can see uh, you know you can find the average velocity right so the average velocity in this case is 20 story points in every iteration right so if th that is the average velocity now if i'm saying that there are eight iterations in release two then the team should be able to complete 20 into 8 that is 160 story points so if i'm given this information I, you know i can probably say that you know what hey i don't think i can do 200 story points i'm more comfortable with 160 story points right um if you want to be on the same side uh, safe side and add some buffer you would probably say you know it's best if i choose between 150 and 160 story points that's probably the velocity of the team that's what they can achieve right so the product owner the scrum master they should plan accordingly that do not try to exceed 160 story points if you are given 200 story points that is not the velocity of the team they will not be able to do it so the, the the reason this is helpful is during the planning meeting you will not take up stories beyond 160 story points so basically you are setting up the team for success in this particular case right so you are trying to give them story points that are achievable which they can finish so most probably your burn down will look great and your you'll be able to finish the sprint on time with a valuable uh, MVP minimal viable product you know that is our goal so prioritize the stories in such a way in this particular case that all the priority stories add up to 140 or 160 story points you know they might be able to get 200 story points but you know you should not always count on it it's they've never achieved that uh, you know, and their velocity has not been that historically, so we should not commit to 200 story points. And anything, so, you know, one, when you're prioritizing a backlog, you know, anything beyond 200 story points should be, if you follow the Moscow rule, you should probably go in the won't get bucket. You know, they are not prioritized, you won't get it. And you'll probably get between, uh, you know, 140 and 160 uh, story points and then you know everything prioritized all the way from 100 to 120 to 140 story points should be achievable. So our steam velocity. Uh, commitment reliability is pretty much based on team velocity. Uh, you know it basically shows uh, how reliable your team is you know when it when it comes to completed versus committed story points how reliable your team has been historically right so if you look at the table here you know i have uh sprint one through eight i have the committed story points that you know the, the team had committed previously and i have the accepted story points what the team actually ended up accepting so the committed reliability is actually just the accepted story points divided by the committed story points and it's a percentage. So here in the first sprint, for instance, you can see that they had committed 20 story points and they accepted the complete 20 story points. So their commitment reliability is 100%. And like this, you can basically find the commitment reliability. So um, you can see in this particular case, it's a pretty good reliable team, right? In most of the sprints, they are 100% or close to 100%. So they, they have finished uh, their stories on time and they have accepted all stories that they've come to. Although there are some sprints where they have not been able to uh, complete all the stories, but overall it is a good team. It's a reliable team. So, you know, the reason some uh, teams try to look at this metric is, you know, they want to see how reliable the team's estimates are. You know, when the team says, hey, I can do uh, 20 story points, I can do 30 story points. You want to see, can they really do that? Or, you know, are they just making up a number? You know, you want to see, this is a good metric to see how they've done historically in the past. 
uh, and you know if they are a good enough team to basically uh, can we rely on their numbers you know are they giving us a good commitment reliability so that's a good measure of uh, commitment reliability for the teams now capacity planning so this is another thing that the scrum master would do uh, during sprint planning meeting right so capacity planning is you know planning the capacity of the team to see if they can take up uh, the story points or not right so usually it's a seven step process uh, for capacity planning so step 1 you calculate the sprint duration right step 2 you list all the team members that you have step 3 you calculate the team member allocation right which team member is going to take up which how many stories step 4 you calculate standard working hour per day you know um, let's say the team member is 100% allocated to your project how many hours are they going to work per day on that project you know they might uh, out of the 8 hours they might you might allocate 6 hours to their project you know given that uh, you know, they might have some lunch breaks, they might be ad hoc uh, meetings, uh, you know, even scrum ceremonies or some other meetings that are, you know, they might be talking offline to their uh, team, mem team members. So you might give them five or six hours in a day. Step five, you know, partial day off. If somebody is going on vacation, they're taking a partial day off. You have to build that into your capacity planning. Step six, um, you know, calculate the ceremony time off. So basically whatever ceremonies, whatever, whether it's sprint planning, daily sprints, you know, whatever time that's going away from the scrum planning because uh, the scrum meetings, you have to allocate that to your team members. Step seven is calculate focus factor. By focus factor, I mean, um, you know, like I mentioned, you know, how much focus do they have in the sprint? Right, so we here we are talking about distractions. Like you can have some ad hoc something came in, you know, something came in on priority. You have to fix a bug, you have to fix a defect. You know, a customer issue came in. You have to the, the team members have to work on that. So you have to build those time in. That you know, there might be some of these ad hoc uh, escalations that the team has to work with, or there might be other meetings. You know, uh, that will take away their focus. So if you if you follow these seven step capacity planning, uh, you will get a good overview of how much time is available for your team members and how much time you should allocate uh, for them. <clears throat> so this is an example of a capacity planning. I just built it in Excel, but you know uh, if you have something like Jira or a ver a version 1 or other ALM2, it's it's very easy to actually build the same. Um, it will give you suggestions as well. So in this particular case, let's say I have five team members, right? Harry, Ferris, Neo, Forrest, Katniss. And they are all estimating the effort that they need for uh, a particular story, which is, you know, it's, we call it story 1. So Harry says, uh, you know, for analysis, and this, this is for the whole spring, by the way. So Harry says, uh, you know, he wants uh, seven hours for analysis, 20 hours for development, functional testing five hours. So total he needs 32 hours for the story. Ferris, similarly, he says he needs 29 hours. Neo says he needs 10 hours. Forrest says 13 hours. And Katniss says 29 hours. So basically, they have already given how much hours uh, they need for finishing a story, right? They've broken it up into tasks, assigned hours to it. As a scrum master, you know, when I build this out, I need to see, uh, I need to account for any holidays, any vacation days, any company uh, holidays, uh, you know, any focus, like, you know, the, the seven steps that I, we saw previously. So you focus factors, you know, all those things we need to build in and then figure out the capacity based on the numbers given by our uh, teams. So, uh, more on this, basically, let's say this is the capacity, like you saw in the previous slide, that 
we have of the team members, right? So here you can see that the total capacity that Harry had during the sprint was 50 hours, right? Ferris said 50 hours, so let's say they're 100% committed.